Okay, back at it. More stuff, a little better lighting, kind of bright, but some of you complain about my lighting on the last video, so here we go. Today we're gonna talk fuel trims. That's right, fuel trims. This is what's gonna be the next couple of things, manifold, restriction, and throttle bodies, blah, 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 blah. Fuel trims today. Let's talk about short-term fuel trims. We're talking about all generations coyotes, what the difference is, blah, blah, blah. How to read it in the data log, but again, very generic, very simple terms, nothing way into the weeds. So let's get right after it. From the last videos, what you have seen is, let's do RPM in black, PM. We're gonna do throttle in blue, just like last time. Throttle. Uh, and we're gonna look at fuel trims in green. Fuel trims in green, okay? Fuel trims. So based on, uh, that M is, that M is suspect as shit. So uh, throttle being blue. So remember last time, let's do a watt log and we're gonna just kind of get right after. This is your throttle, okay? Trails off. Let's say you go watt there. And then RPM, okay? Fuel trims. Now, what are your fuel trims? Your fuel trims, your short term fuel trims are real time, right now, what is happening right now is your STFT. So short term, short term fuel trim is now. Long term fuel trim is an average of the life of the fuel trim. So it's a long term average, okay? So let's say for instance, you have fuel trims at idle, let's say this is idle, right? And let's say your fuel trims are plus 10. On coyotes, that's lean. Previous generations, plus 10 was rich. So, and, and some of them are like long terms or opposite of short terms, whatever. Let's stick to coyote, gen two and up. Gen one and up, screw it, gen one and up, all coyote. So if at idle, your fuel trims are plus 10, and you, you have it there for a while, then after, let's say, two or three days, your long trims, let's say, sh let's say short trims equal 10, and your long trims will eventually start showing plus 10. And the way you see it on the data log is 1.10. So 10% over. And then, after it has learned that, this will look like regular 1.0. Short trims are fine. So if you only monitor short-term fuel trims, you're gonna think, oh, my short-term fuel trims are fine, they're 1.0, but then it has baked in an automatic long-term correction of 10%. So you gotta monitor both. But let's try to keep it on the simple side and let's do watt stuff. Wide open throttle, watt, I shouldn't have to explain it. So let's say your fuel trims at watt, let's say this is plus 10, minus 10, so this is rich, lean, zero. Perfect, right? So rich, lean, sorry, lean, rich, and perfect. And you go wide open throttle, naturally aspirated. Well, your fuel trims are gonna graph like that because they're always trimming, they're always moving, okay? They're always adjusting. So let's say that is, you give me a watt log, and let's say this is uh, 7,500 RPM, 7,500. Fuel trims being good like that, I have no issue. I'm like, if this carries out all the way through the, through the, through the watt log, I'm like, dude, your fuel trims are dead nuts. Now I'm willing to do plus minus 5%. So plus five, minus five. This is my threshold. This is where I like the fuel trims to be. I don't like them to vary all that much. Boosted or NA, it doesn't matter. So. Most of the time, when the watt log looks that good, plus zero, plus minus 5%, I, that's Ford spec. See ya, bye, you're good, have a good day. So a lot of you guys see a data log, or you send me a data log and you go, Alex, how's the log look? And I said, give me a watt log, give me idle and slow rev, and everything's within 5%. I said, you're good, see you later. And you go, wait, no more revisions? I'm like, no, that means it's that tight. That means your car's reacting properly, you have no math leaks, you have no fueling issues, at the end of the day, I'm happy. So we're gonna leave it alone. Why mess with something that's working? Sometimes you guys just want adjustments for the sake of wanting adjustments and I don't, I don't get you, but whatever. 
So let's say now we are boosted. Same thing, boosted or NA, I wanna be within 5%. But let's say you have a, a boosted setup on pump gas and a boosted pump, and your fuel trims start to do this with RPM. They're starting to trend lean. The car is trying to put fuel in with RPM. Uh-oh, something's going on. There's a fueling variable and now your fuel trims are spiking. I go, these are a spiking fuel trim. So then you go, well, Alex, what can you do? And I'm like, well, this is a sign of fuel delivery. Now, Gen 1, Gen 2 Mustang does not have a fuel rail pressure sensor, Coyote. GT500 does, sticking with Coyote. Gen 1, Gen 2 Mustang does not have a fuel rail pressure sensor. We cannot see fuel pressure at the rail in the data log, period. Gen 3, you can, but we'll stick to Gen 1, Gen 2 right now. <clears throat> so once I start seeing this, I go, do you have a booster pump in the car? Yeah, I do. Can you check the fuse? Okay, check the fuse, fuse fine. I'm like, how old's the vehicle? Oh, it's a 2011. Okay, it's 12 years old. You probably have a weak pump. I suggest you either get another pump or a booster pump that brings it up to 18 volts or hey, check the voltage at the fuel pump drive module. Make sure that the BAP booster pump is actually putting that voltage to the fuel pump drive module. Oh no, it's only seeing 14 volts. Ah, get another BAP. They fail. They're just an amplifier basically. So once they get another BAP, same tune. I don't have to do anything. They get another BAP. All of a sudden, I, they, they go back to me and fuel trims actually go a little on the, on the eh, let's say they go on the rich side. I prefer a little on the rich side than lean side. But what happens when I see a spiking fuel trim and let's say you're a tuner that just says, well, let me just add fuel. Let me just add fuel. Well, your load calculation is super fucked up, but let's not get there. So you add fuel, you add fuel, you add fuel, and, and let's say eventually you get sort of something that, you know, eh, it still trends up, but not as bad. As a tuner that hasn't experienced a lot of spiking fuel trends like that, you're gonna go, I fixed it. Until one day it is 50 degrees outside or 40 degrees outside. Now you have denser air coming in and you have more strain on your fuel system and it's still gonna start spiking. So I say it's a fuel delivery issue 100%. I've seen this happen on Gen 1, Gen 2 cars with a return style fuel system. What usually happens is the second pump is not kicking on. So when we see a spiking fuel trim, that's a fuel delivery issue because if it was tune related, it would be, it would be immediately lean. Like the moment you go what? Boom, it's, it's like this. That, it's flat, but it's lean throughout the whole thing. It's not trending up or down. I think, okay, maybe I gotta add a little fuel to the math because he has maybe crazy airflow going in or it's a custom math that we're dialing in from scratch. Cool. Now, we're gonna talk Gen 3, Gen 3 Mustang. Gen 3 Mustang, thankfully, has a fuel rail pressure sensor. So, this could be deceiving. I can tell that you have a fuel delivery issue based on fuel pressure. So let's say your fuel trims are mm, RPM. Uh, let's go RPM. And let's say your fuel trims are nice within 5%, right? Let's say they're kind of doing this, but then on gen three, it starts kind of going flat and then comes down and gets flat and flat. It's kind of doing this weird flat curve. And I go, huh, that's weird. It's not trimming as fast. Well. The fuel rail pressure sensor can modulate the pulse width of the injector to make up for the lack of fuel pressure. That's a very generic way of saying it. I'm sure tuners out there are gonna go, no, that's not exactly what's happening. And I'm like, dude, fucking relax. We're just doing layman's term stuff here. But let's say now we're looking at FRP, fuel rail pressure. Uh, my, my, my penmanship is absolute shit. So now we're looking at fuel rail pressure and that comes up red on the graph and fuel rail pressure. Let's take this off to not confuse you. That's short, that's fuel, that's fuel trim. So green is fuel trims. Now we're gonna go FRP. Fuel rail pressure is doing this in the data log. The pressure in the fuel rail is dropping. 
Okay, so if you're starting off at, let's say 55 PSI, and this is 40 PSI, that's not good. It's dropping off with high RPM. Now on return style fuel systems, this is an interesting one too. I have seen return style fuel systems still have a pressure drop, which tell me that the fuel system's just not adequate with budget style return systems or boost referencing. Boost referencing the fuel rail pressure regulator. There's a regulator that you get with a fuel system that if it does not have a vacuum boost source, it doesn't raise pressure one-to-one. -one. So if you have a 55 PSI base on a Mustang, return style fuel system, okay? And you give me, let's say uh, RFS at 10 PSI, with a 55 PSI base, I should see how much fuel pressure, how much pressure should I see at wide open throttle in the fuel rail pressure sensor with 10 PSI if it's boost referenced properly. Plus 55. So equals 65 PSI. If I have 10 PSI on a 55 PSI base with a boost vacuum reference, which usually drops to 45 PSI at an idle, because of the vacuum. I hate explaining that. But once you give it a little gas boom, it comes back up to 55 and at boost, fuel rail pressure should go like this. If an our return style fuel system with a boost reference doesn't go up in pressure, there's a problem. I'll give you a good example. Shad Hoffman. Shad Hoffman has an ESS manual Mustang, ESS supercharged manual Mustang, and it had, um, I think, 14 PSI to it. So when I looked at his data log, let's just erase it from scratch because I like starting everything from scratch. I'm too much shit here. So when Shad Hoffman had a, uh, a fuel rail pressure issue, and what led me to believe that he had a, uh, a non-boost reference system was, Fuel rail pressure. Fuel rail pressure dropped. I said 55 base, yup. Well, I'm like, I'm looking at his log and it's doing that. And I'm like, wait a minute, is this boost reference? He goes, yeah. And I'm like, his short trims were doing exactly what they do when they're not boost reference and they start to flatline, but they're not going up or down. They're not spiking. They're at, they're just, they're just hanging out. And I'm like, okay, do you have a boost reference line on your regulator? He didn't. So now he puts a, a boost reference line in it and all of a sudden his fuel pressure goes up. The car gains like 80 horsepower because now it has adequate fuel pressure to supply the engine with the proper amount of fuel. He upgraded his injectors. He put a boost reference on and he went from 800 horse to 970 something horse, like 860 to 970 or 880 to 970 I didn't touch the tune. We, we changed the injector data, that's it. I didn't add timing, I didn't do anything. So, just to recap, a spiking fuel trim on a Gen 1, Gen 2 is a fuel delivery issue. A fuel trim that already starts high at wide open throttle is more potentially a, 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 math, a, a math data issue. If you have a custom cold air, and fuel trims NA start dropping off, well, you gotta remove fuel. If it's flat right, out, right off the gate, typically it's tune related. If it spikes, you have a fuel delivery issue if it's boosted, and that is not a tune issue. If it's flat, you should add. If it's spiking, it's more than likely mechanical. And if it's too much fuel, you can take fuel away. And hopefully that gives you a general sense of what we deal with when it comes to fuel trims. Hopefully this wasn't too confusing. I wanted to give you a crash course on fuel trims, what we see, the theories behind it, and how we deal with it and how to identify it. Again, guys, this is not scientific. I'm just giving you a very generic sense of a subject matter so that you're somewhat aware of it. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later.